U.S. President Joe Biden's COVID-19 symptoms are improving, according to his physician. Dr. Kevin O'Connor on Saturday said Biden is experiencing a sore throat, runny nose, a loose cough, and body aches, calling them less troublesome symptoms. The 79-year-old president tested positive for COVID on Thursday and was given the antiviral drug Paxlovid. O'Connor says Biden most likely has the highly contagious BA5 variant, which is sweeping across the United States. Since his diagnosis, the White House has highlighted the president's ability to work through his illness. When I'm doing well, I'm getting a lot of work done. Gonna Biden's team released this video on Thursday, where he reiterated that he was fully vaccinated and had both of his boosters. On Friday, he met with members of his economic team virtually. Let me start by apologizing my voice. I'm feeling much better than I sound. Thousands of Palestinians attended a funeral procession on Sunday for two gunmen killed earlier in the day by Israeli security forces in the occupied West Bank. The fighters, claimed as members by the Fatah al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, died in a pre-dawn clash at a house in Nablus. The Palestinian Health Ministry said six others were wounded. Police said Israeli security forces, on an apparent arrest raid of a wanted suspect, came under fire. They, quote, responded with live fire and other means until neutralizing the terrorists inside the house and on its roof. Writing on Twitter, Hussein al-Sheikh, a senior Palestinian official, condemned what he described as a crime committed by occupation forces. Israeli forces have stepped up raids in the West Bank in recent months, after men from the area carried out deadly street attacks in Israel. U.S. brokered peace talks aimed at establishing a Palestinian state in East Jerusalem, the West Bank and Gaza collapsed in 2014 and have shown no signs of revival. Separately on Sunday, the Israeli Navy fired on a fishing boat accused of smuggling in Hamas supplies from Egypt after its two crewmen escaped. A military spokesman said the vessel had strayed from Israel's maritime cordon on Gaza, which is ruled by Hamas. The Navy fired on the boat after it did not heed orders to stop, the military said, adding that it carried unspecified supplies for Hamas. The chairman of the Palestinian Fishermen's Union said such allegations have in the past proved baseless. The union said the two crew members had jumped into the water and swum to shore before the boat was destroyed. This fence cutting through Poland's Bieloisa forest on the country's border with Belarus is meant to stop the flow of migrants. But it is also hampering the movement of the Bieloisa lynxes and could lead to their extinction, researchers say. Before the border wall's completion in late June, about 40 of the lynxes, which are protected by Polish law, inhabited the dense forest. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an EU Natura 2000 Special Area of Conservation. It is unclear how many of the lynxes stayed on the Polish side after the barrier was built, but the population is likely to be divided between the two sides, says the Mammal Research Institute at the Polish Academy of Sciences. Rafał Kowalczyk is a scientist there. Lynxes used areas on both sides of the border. They had areas on both sides of the border and functioned as one population. Now, dividing the forest into two separate ecosystems will cause the population of these animals to be separated. In the case of the lynx, it is so important that we already know that this population was partially isolated. It was characterized by a very low genetic variation the lowest among European populations. Kowalczyk says his research showed that lynxes used to cross through the fence in Belarus undisturbed about 50 to 60 times a year. Poland's border guard says the fence does not constitute an obstacle for animals, as it has 24 gates for large creatures to go through if needed, which will enable continuous migration. Russian missiles hit Ukraine's major port Odessa on Saturday, Ukraine's military has said, only a day after a deal was signed to try and unblock grain exports across the Black Sea. The landmark agreement signed between Moscow and Kyiv on Friday is seen as crucial to curbing soaring global food prices. UN officials said they hoped the agreement would be operational within a few weeks. 
But it was not yet clear if that would still be possible, given Saturday's reported strikes. Natalia Humeniuk, spokeswoman for Ukraine's Operational Command South, said there was no significant damage from the strikes or casualties. She said two missiles hit infrastructure and two were intercepted by air defense forces. Ukraine's foreign ministry called on the United Nations and Turkey, which mediated the grain deal, to ensure that Russia fulfills its commitments and allows free passage in the grain corridor. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said he unequivocally condemns the reported strikes. Turkey's defense minister said Russia had told Ankara it had nothing to do with this attack, and were examining the issue very closely and in detail. A blockade of Ukraine's ports by Russia's Black Sea fleet since Moscow's February 24th invasion has trapped tens of millions of tons of grain. With Russia and Ukraine both major global wheat suppliers, food prices have soared. The crisis has pushed some 47 million people into acute hunger, according to the World Food Programme. Russia, which called its invasion a special military operation, has denied responsibility. It blames Western sanctions for slowing its own food and fertilizer exports and Ukraine for mining the approaches to its Black Sea ports. Under Friday's deal, Ukrainian officials would guide ships through safe channels across the mined waters to three ports, including Odessa, where they would be loaded with grain. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Friday the deal would make around $10 billion worth of grain available for sale, with roughly 20 million tonnes of last year's harvest to be exported. I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. It's a label that's only been applied to the coronavirus pandemic and ongoing efforts to eradicate polio, but on Saturday, the World Health Organization said the rapidly spreading monkeypox outbreak represented a global health emergency. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus explained why they were declaring the high alert. We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria in the international health regulations. The label of a public health emergency of international concern is the WHO's highest level of alert, designed to alert governments that a coordinated international response is needed. Such an announcement could unlock funding and global efforts to collaborate on sharing vaccines and treatments. WHO's assessment is that the risk of monkeypox is moderate globally and in all regions, except in the European region, where we assess the risk is high. Members of an expert committee that met on Thursday to discuss the potential recommendation were split on the decision, prompting Tedros himself to break the deadlock, he told reporters. So far this year, there have been more than 16,000 cases of monkeypox in more than 75 countries and five deaths in Africa. The viral disease spreads via close contact and tends to cause flu-like symptoms and pus-filled skin lesions. Its recent outbreak has chiefly spread between men who have sex with men outside Africa where it is endemic. That means that this is an outbreak that can be stopped with the right strategies in the right groups. But WHO officials said on Saturday they were exploring the possibility of the virus spreading via new modes of transmission. On Friday, the United States identified its first two monkeypox cases in children.